tonight. The NRA yeah. debates itself on guns. Why are there machine guns available to civilians? No. This is not available. And the man Me Too missed. Do my ladies run this motherfucker? Special counsel Robert Mueller managed to get another guilty plea today when Rick Gates admitted to conspiracy against the United States and lying to the FBI. He's now cooperating with Mueller's Russia investigation. Gates used to be a business partner of former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort and served as Manafort's deputy during the campaign. Both men were indicted last fall on a variety of criminal charges including money laundering. And late today, Mueller tacked on more charges against Manafort. In a statement earlier, Manafort said that he maintains his innocence and that, quote, I had hoped and expected my business colleague would have had the strength to continue the battle to prove our innocence. Since Sunday, more than 400 people have been killed in Syria's eastern Ghouta outside Damascus, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. The toll has climbed throughout the week, as airstrikes by pro-Assad forces have continued to devastate the area held by rebels. Hospitals and clinics have been targeted, and at least 99 children are among the dead. The UN's envoy to Syria referred to the situation there as a massacre, but the UN Security Council has delayed voting on a resolution calling for a 30-day ceasefire. The U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem will open in May, much sooner than the end of 2019 timeline that Vice President Mike Pence suggested last month. The Israeli transportation minister tweeted a thank you note to President Trump for timing the move to coincide with Israel's 70th Independence Day. Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital in December and announced the U.S. would relocate its embassy there from Tel Aviv. The Associated Press reported that the administration is mulling an offer from Republican mega-donor Sheldon Adelson to cover some of the costs. The Treasury Department said today that it's imposing the, quote, largest sanctions package yet against North Korea in an effort to keep putting pressure on sources of funding for its nuclear program. U.S. regulators targeted one person, 27 entities, and 28 ships with the financial restrictions and said they were specifically trying to disrupt the transport of illicit coal and fuel. The Chinese government has taken control of Unbung Insurance Group, a privately run company that bought the Waldorf Astoria for nearly $2 billion in 2015. China's insurance regulator said today that Unbung violated laws and regulations and put its financial footing at risk. Regulators also said the company's former chairman has been prosecuted on, quote, suspicion of economic crimes. Last March, Democratic lawmakers voiced ethics concerns over reports that Unbung was in talks to buy a Manhattan property owned by Jared Kushner's family. Kushner companies subsequently said it agreed with Unbung to end those talks. Florida's Republican governor, Rick Scott, announced today that he's proposing a major change in the state's gun laws after the Parkland shooting. We must take care of our kids. Among other things, he's pushing to let courts stop violent and mentally ill people from owning a gun, to raise the purchasing age to 21 for all firearms, and to make sure there's a police officer stationed at every school. Scott's plan is a break from Republican orthodoxy, and it suggests that getting past the stalemate on guns shouldn't be that hard. But for the man at the top of the party, following Scott's roadmap won't be that easy. President Trump's audience is bigger than Governor Scott's. So how to approach the gun issue is not as simple for him. And Trump is also a notorious chameleon, primarily concerned with appealing to the room that he's in. Here at CPAC, he was talking to his base and it showed. He slipped back into some of his greatest hits. And we believe young Americans should be taught to love their country and to respect its traditions. Don't worry, you're getting the wall. Don't worry, okay? I heard and got back from the audience the cheers and responses that make him feel at home. Fire up, fire up, fire up, fire up. 
He read a rhyming fable about a snake to bash immigrants. He talked about God and the late Billy Graham. And he presented gun regulation as the reliable wedge issue that it is. They'll take away your Second Amendment, which we will never allow to happen. They'll take away your Second Amendment. But the president also seemed to remember that he's often in different rooms, ones where he meets with victims. A father drops his daughter off at school, kisses her goodbye, waves to her as she's walking up the path, and never sees her alive again. Gets a call. Can't believe it. Thinks it's a nightmare. Wants to wake up from the nightmare. Trump also tried a third approach, pushing his not very fleshed out arm the teachers idea, which seemed to be an attempt to win over Second Amendment hardliners and worried mainstream parents. And the beauty is it's concealed. Nobody would ever see it unless they needed it. It's concealed. So this crazy man who walked in wouldn't even know who it is that has it. That's good. It's not bad. That's good. And a teacher would have shot the hell out of him before he knew what happened. He did ultimately get around to a vague nod at strengthening background checks, but he didn't touch raising the assault weapons purchasing age or banning bump stocks, which wouldn't have gone over well here anyway. In a lot of ways, this speech was a portrait of one president's very drawn out thought process. Does he continue to try to please the base that elected him, or does he try to appeal to moderate Republicans whose votes the GOP needs in 2018 to fight off a possible blue wave? That's a legitimately tough political calculation to make. Which means he could very well keep tailoring his message for the audience he's in front of until gun violence is back out of the headlines again. One of the reasons it's hard for Trump to navigate the guns issue is that the gun rights community itself is still trying to figure out whether change is acceptable. Vice News asked Republican strategist Frank Luntz to hold a focus group with current and former NRA members to see if things have changed after the Parkland shooting. You turn on the news, you read the newspaper. Do you feel good about where our country is right now? Overall, I do. You do? I do. Is the moral state of our country, are our values the way they should be? No. They're, no. they're in the no. toilet. In the toilet, it's horrible. And that's, that's why we have things like happened last week, because the moral fabric of the society is fraying and has been for the last 50 years. It seemed like a problem. Instead of being united, we're getting more segregated and apart for his religions, politics, all different issues, guns, weapons, everything. I am a member of NRA, but I disagree with a lot of the ways that you can get a gun now. There needs to be mental checks. There needs to be, and what, why do we uh, have no, machine, no, excuse me. No. Why are there machine guns available to civilians? No. This is not available. This is why. This is why. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, Hold on. That, how, how, did the, how did the mass shooter get the gun? Anyone know? He went and he bought, bought it. it. He was 19. His That's name the point. should have been on a list. The FBI, the police department, and the whatever their social services that all were told and, that and, kid. Exactly. And what are we focusing and, and on? Years. We're focusing on how bad the NRA is. That's a crock. What about the idea that guns are too prevalent? That it is too easy for anyone Disagree. to get a gun at I any disagree. time Listen, for any that's... reason? It's not guns, it's mentally unstable people getting access to guns. It's not mentally unstable people. You don't know if someone's mentally unstable until they do something. You can't put a label on all of it, but what you can say is that every single person that aims a gun at another person and pulls a trigger has 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 a, a screw loose it's here pain. to a point I get as pissed off as anybody does just watching the TV at night. I've got a whole bunch of guns and you know what? I would never even consider pulling that on somebody unless I thought someone was gonna kill me or kill somebody that I, that I care about. In my opinion, I feel like the rules and regulations to even have a gun in your hands, in your family, if you want a gun, great. But I feel like the rules to get to get there need to be changed. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have guns, but I'm saying that there's certain guns that we shouldn't have. Does that make sense? It's a cultural problem. How does that get solved? Values have to be reinstilled. Simple as that. You can't put bans on guns. It's ridiculous. These are outbursts that are expressions of personal pain. This is people who, it's not personal. But the problem is you cannot stop. Well, Tell wait a minute. Kind of I disagree with you. It can be stopped. Why are How? they going to schools? How? Because the school 
is a gun-free zone. It's a victim-rich environment. Are you suggesting that we put more guns in schools? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. No. Absolutely. Yes. Why is it yes. that the NRA has the image that it has? This thing, we're a bunch of hillbillies. And what are you? We're people that believe in the fundamental right to defend ourselves. Does that include weapons that can kill 50 people in 90 seconds? That's misusing the weapons. That's not using it for what, for what they're what why originally intended. What are you talking about? Frank? Why do yeah. we need those weapons? Well, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. You need to be able to have whatever about. weapon you want because if, as soon as you go in there with the regulations, it's a slippery slope. It's like, hey, oh, I can make this justification why you can't have that weapon. Now nah, it's hard to move to the next one. So you, you have to start somewhere defending your right. How many of you believe that we need to step up and enhance background checks for people? I want to make the point that, that, that there is a consensus. Again, what you all have in common. Right. There are 14 of you in this room. All of you at one point were members of the NRA. Most of you are still. That you, as members, support enhanced background checks. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. What else do you support? They have to change the HIPAA laws to allow the releasing of certain information to the police agencies that they can't do now so they can screen out somebody who is unbalanced. By a show of hands, how many of you would change the laws to make that information accessible? Once again, virtually everybody. Those kids are begging the politicians to remove these weapons. Kids don't understand how the world works. They're kids. I disagree. I think that kids today are smarter than they ever have been. Their ideas need to be listened to and maybe there's a better way that we haven't thought of because quite frankly, we've been kind of screwing things up a bit. You're the NRA. What are you gonna tell that father? I have the right to defend my right to carry. That's what I want. Anytime somebody attacks that, I'm going to defend my right constitutionally. Banning semi-automatic weapons is not gonna give you your child back. It's not gonna do it for you. And if it was a knife, are we gonna ban knives? That's what I, I mean, where does it stop? Where do we stop because your child died? I'm watching this, I'm listening to you, and you give me no hope whatsoever well, that this won't happen again. Well, it will happen. It will happen yeah, again. I wish we could say exactly. it wouldn't. And I think most of us are looking for a very easy macro solution that stricter regulation is gonna change everything, but we need to look at a more micro regulation, and that's that these families need to take stricter control of their kids, and it's the breakdown of the family dynamic that's causing this problem. What do you say to those kids who are marching to Tallahassee? What do you say to those kids who are not backing down and they're gonna to march to Washington, D.C.? They lost their best friends, they lost their brothers and sisters. What do you say to them? First thing I would tell them is keep fighting, keep speaking, you're doing the right thing. But I would also have to tell them that it's really sad that it's happened to them. But unfortunately, our constitution says the second amendment is a right to bear arms. We're talking about something obviously very, very antiquated when you're talking about that, okay? Here's what I would tell a kid. Say, if you really wanna make a change, you gotta do it in baby steps. And if anyone knows anything about policy in Washington, you gotta baby step it. You just can't one day turn it off. So what you do is you have to you know, look at magazine capacity. You really don't need 30 rounds. You just no. don't. I mean, do you need more than five? Probably not, honestly. Okay, is that okay? That's okay. No. Yeah. I mean, no. No. I no. Why not? Because if there's some guy breaking into your house, maybe five isn't gonna do it. Oh, come on. Oh, boy. Oh, no. How many of you are currently members of the NRA? Raise your hands. So you're not a member anymore? I'm not a member. Why not? I personally don't really like what the NRA stands for anymore. I don't wanna be part of the group to actually have to defend it. Because I think a lot of the stuff the NRA stands for isn't defensible, frankly. I think the NRA stands oftentimes for saying we should have the guns in people's hands no matter what the cost. It's not just 17 kids, guys. It's thousands of people. You've got a big cultural problem, and this country's in a lot of pain. That pain's been expressed lots of ways, and guns are the tool. I am scared to death of my nephews and my kids being in school now because they're not taking action to protect the kids. You guys, if the government stays complacent, it is going to escalate. If they ban all guns, would you feel safer for your nephew and niece in school You today? know, I, I would. You would? You're crazy. For the fifth year in a row, 
India is the top destination for an industry that's been criticized for taking a huge toll on the environment and exploiting unskilled workers. Ship breaking. New figures released by an NGO that monitors the practice show that last year, 239 out of 835 decommissioned ships landed in India. Vice News visited the country's largest shipbreaking yard to examine the cost to workers and their families. This is the Alung Sosia shipyard, the world's biggest shipbreaking facility. The shipyard opened in 1983 and now has about 200 privately owned lots. Salvaging companies bid on old ships and then contract migrant workers to tear them down selling the scrap materials for a profit. The sprawling shipyard brings in nearly a billion dollars a year for India, where on average between 30 to 40 percent of the world's ships are sent to be dismantled annually. यहां पे तकरीबन अलग से ये जो वर्कर है जो बाहर से हैं 30 से 40000 हो 40000 जैसा हो अपने इंडिया में कहीं भी काटे इतने तो नहीं हो सकता है ऐसे तो यहां सस्ता पड़ते हैं तभी ना इतनी तादाद पे आते हैं और ये सब अपने लिए भी अच्छा ही है इंडिया को तो एक जॉब भी मिल रहा है हाई प्रीमियम्स ऑन रिसाइकल्ड स्टील combined with India's loose environmental regulations and low labor costs, have made Alung one of the most cost-effective markets for ship dismantling. My age is 21 years old, and I'm working here for 6 years. I'm working for 12,000 people, and I'm working for 6,000 people, and I'm working for 6,000 people. Workers here earn roughly 1.4 times India's per capita national income. Shipbreaking feeds the economies in other ways too. Leftover parts find their way to the Alung market, where they're sold by hundreds of local merchants. The Alung market is at least 15 kilometers. It's in the jahaz, it's all about it. This is the market. धंधा कर रहा हूँ इसमें से मेरा परिवार का पूरा कुटुंब का ज़्यादा नहीं मिलता है लेकिन रोजी रोटी मिलती है। Despite the economic benefits, much of the global waste trade has come at a high cost to workers. The industry has been criticized as a form of quote toxic colonialism. दिनों रात इसमें कचड़ा है प्रदूषण है वातावरण भी यहाँ का ख़राब है सब बीमारी सीमारी सब लगती है। Decommissioned ships are rife with hazardous compounds like asbestos and TBT, which have been banned for international transport since 1989. पढ़ाई तो कि हाई स्कूल तक पढ़ाई की थी हमने लेकिन पढ़ाई पे उतना पैसा ये सब वो सब तो अपने बस की बात नहीं थी इसीलिए अब तो पूरी जिंदगी ही करना पड़ेगा आर केली इस द मोस्ट सक्सेसफुल आर एंड बी आर्टिस्ट ऑफ द पास थ्री डेकेड्स he sold more than 60 million records worldwide. But the self-proclaimed Pied Piper of R&B is also music's most notorious figure. Accusations against him have ranged from 21 counts of child pornography to sex with minors and rape. Last summer, before Hollywood rejected Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly was accused of running a sex cult in properties between Atlanta and Chicago. None of these accusations have stuck. Most ended in dropped charges, confidential settlements, and, in one case, an acquittal. And unlike Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly is not apologizing, and he's not in sex rehab. He's in Detroit. This is not our first time doing an R. Kelly protest. 
we've been doing them since 2009. Um, and things just haven't changed. Kalima Johnson runs a sexual assault service center in Detroit, and she's protested R. Kelly for nearly a decade. And we got some hardcore fans here too. We've had to deal with the trolls, we've had to deal with a lot. But today is the day. I'm Detroit to my bones and my blood. I just can't believe that we're still allowing this kind of thing to happen, so. The Mute R. Kelly movement started last July after the sex call allegations surfaced. Local campaigns have since claimed responsibility for the cancellation of R. Kelly concerts in eight cities. But so far, they've had no traction in Detroit, where Kalima says the local community, specifically Black middle-aged women, have a troubling mindset. Don't snitch. One of the things that we've done in our families is protect perpetrators because we don't trust the criminal justice system. We protect people who are talented. We protect, I mean, we no one's saying that he doesn't have hit records so he can't sing. But the problem is, is that he has a very problematic history with underage black girls particularly. We really are here unapologetically for black girls. Because in the city of Detroit, 80% of the sexual assault and tested rape kids were African-American women. And so what does that say to African-American women and girls that when Harvey Weinstein and when Matt Lauer yeah. are losing their jobs, R. Kelly is performing less than 10 minutes away from a place where untested rape kid survivors come? Mute R. Kelly! Mute R. Kelly! Even with the multitude of allegations that have come out over the years, that's still, you still need more. <sighs> Shit, yes and no. Do you believe the allegations that have come out about him? I'm not a really a judgmental person. I feel like, you know, whatever he does, that's between him and the Lord at the end of the day. These teenage girls know what they're doing and they want to be a part of it. So you put your own self in that type of predicament. Do you believe any of the allegations? I do, I do. Can you separate the man from the art? I sure can. I mean, if, if he need to be punished, punish him. I mean, I ain't gonna say he did it because you ain't innocent until you prove him guilty, so. Sex offenders and pedophile and rapists to be performed up in here. The Detroit protests didn't stop R. Kelly's fan base from turning up for him. Do my ladies run this motherfucker? But there were lots of empty patches in the arena and he's had to cancel other recent concerts due to low ticket sales. That gives the Mute R. Kelly movement hope that it's making progress. It's about to get freaky to the motherfucker up on this stage To the organizers, it's a business for them. And I love that in all of these corporate working environments, we're starting to have conversations of consent. Let's also think about the music industry. That's Vice News Tonight for Friday, February 23rd. I saved you, cried the woman. And you've bitten me, heavens why. You know your bite is poisonous. And now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up. Silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. 